Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at recreating um, this color background color change on scroll effect that you can see on this Mada.co website. Um, you can see we get these really nice vibrant colors when we scroll down the page. Um, and yeah, we basically just kind of replicated this. So when you scroll to a certain point on the page, you can see we get this nice color change. Um, this will be a really simple tutorial using the Intersection Observer API. Um, just want to you know ease back into making tutorials now I've been off YouTube for a while so I really want to get back into making these for 2025. So yeah, let's get going guys and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Okay guys, so to get started with this uh, tutorial you can see that I've just got the usual index.html, a style.css file and an app.js file here. And in my index.html file you can see I've just got some boilerplate code um, emitted here. Um, in the header section, we've got the link to our style.css file. And then we also have the uh, script source at the bottom here, linking to our app.js file as well. Okay, and then you'll see within our body, we just have around, what, four sections here. And then we also have a footer at the bottom. So each section consists of a different um, part of our landing page here. This first one is the hero section, you can see the ID of hero. And it has some generic, you know, hero introduction text. And then what you'll also notice with these, this is the important part of this tutorial, is that we have these data attributes, okay? So we can specify here data and then hyphen, and then whatever data attribute you want to set, which in this case is color, okay? We could do this for anything. So as long as you use a data keyword and a hyphen, you could, for example, say parallax, and then just say, if you wanted, for example, this specific section to have a parallax speed of three, that's what you'd use here. So you use this data attribute, JavaScript will pick up this, this data attribute and then you can use that in your JavaScript code. We don't need to do the parallax for this tutorial, but you'll see here, we do need this color. So if, when we scroll into this section or when this section comes into the view, we want the background to change this RGB color here. Okay, so this is like a gray color. And then when we scroll and when the about section is in view, we want the background to change to this color. That's why we're using these different data color attributes, okay? Um, so that's it for HTML, okay? So just you know, get get some generic sections in your HTML, and then we we set the footer as well, just to um, show you that kind of faded footer effect. Okay, so now I'm going to come to our style.css, and then we're just going to actually let's just open this to live server first, so we can see what we're working with. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. Now let's just um, remove all the default margins and paddings in the CSS. We just say margin zero, padding zero, and box size in border box. And then we'll also, I just want to do a font family here as well. And I'm just going to say sans serif. So we get a nice uh, sans serif font. And then I'm just going to say font weight. Um, we'll make the font weight just a lighter 400. And then I next just want to say list style of none, like so. And then I just want to add my person letter spacing as well, just to make it look, I always like doing this just to make the text look a bit it looks neater to me when you just decrease the spacing. So just say uh, three M's, you can see the, the tracking is like tighter on the text. Okay, and then body, what I want to do here is I just want to set the initial background color to this gray color we set on our first section here. So we just take this RGB 185, 187, 189. Okay, and then you can see that's that nice gray color. Okay, and then what I want to do here, I want to apply a transition um, duration time. So when we specify the background color, um, I want the duration, the, the, the animation duration to last for one second, and we'll just do an ease in, ease out, uh, tr animation ease in there, like so. Okay, and then next one I want to do is I just want to make these sections bigger so we can actually scroll the page. So I'm gonna say section here, give them each a height of 100 viewport heights. And then we'll say a width of 100 VW for viewport widths. So that takes up the 100% of the screen on the width. And then we'll just say display flex because we want to center our content. And then I'm going to say um, flex direction. I want to do column. So now you can see our content in a column format. And then we'll just say, I want to give uh, the content, yeah, just a bit of a gap here. It's a bit compressed at the moment. So we'll just say gap of 10 pixels. You can see now I've got a nice gap in between the content. And then I want to also just say, um, justify content to the center. And then we'll just say align item center as well, to center that. 
okay and that's looking nice okay that's so that's just you know a basic boilerplate um and then final thing is that it's just a let's go to the footer here and i want to make this quite a large footer actually we'll just give it a height of 100 vh and then we'll give it a width again of 100 vw and then here i'm just going to say background and here we're going to use a linear gradient like so and then we want to go to the bottom okay so this is the direction that the linear gradient is going to go it's going to go from the top to the bottom that's why i specify to the bottom here and then we want to start off the gradient as transparent like so at zero percent so from the very top and then we want to gradually fade to the rgb this orange color so we say 249 and then we'll say 87 and then 32 okay and then we want that to finish at 50 percent of the footer so now you'll see when we scroll to the bottom because we get that nice faded effect now which looks quite cool i think so you go from transparent to the orange around 50 percent of the footer and then the rest of the half you have this nice solid orange color okay that's it for our html css now let's just get the javascript going to get this color changing on scroll okay so what we can do here uh, first thing i want to do in my javascript is just say const sections equals um and then we can just say we want to use a spread operator here in an array and we just want to do document dot query selector all and then we want to target all of the section elements so now you'll see if i console.log sections come to our console in here and you'll see that we get our array of sections here we have our hero about projects and clients section okay and then the next thing i want to do here is i'm now going to use the intersection observer and this is like a browser api which we can use um, which will you know pick up when specific sections are in the viewport okay so to do that first we need to do is specify some options i'm just going to say let options is going to equal an object and here we want to set a threshold okay and this will just be 0 0.5 and what this threshold does it means when 50 percent of the section is in the viewport or you know 50 percent yeah comes into the viewport that's when um, we will trigger the intersection observer to target that color attribute of the section and change the background color so let's just do a callback function now so we can say handle intersect okay and this is just going to take in the entries that our intersection observer picks up which will be the sections on our on our on our landing page and then here we can just say entries dot for each and then here we can just say entry Okay, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say if entry dot is intersecting that means the entry is well within 50 percent of the viewport then what we can say here is we want to say um, document dot body dot style dot background color oh, color and that's going to equal and then we want to take the entry dot target and then we can say get attribute and then we can just say data color like so okay and then that's it for our callback function um, and what we need to do here as well is I need to add an equal sign there like so and make this an arrow function okay and then now what we want to do here is we're just going to spin up a new instance of the intersection observer so we can say observer equals new intersection observer and then we can just pass in the callback function first which is this handle intersect like so and then we can pass in the options here as well which we specified up here so options and then what i want to do now is just loop through each of our sections and then we can say dot for each section and then i just want to our observer to observe the section so we say observer dot observe section like so so now you'll see when we scroll down the page we get a nice color change effect when the relevant uh, section comes into view 
Okay, so just to show you um, how that's working, we can say entry stop for each if entry dot is intersecting, we say console dot log entry. And then if I come to my console here, yeah, you can see now whenever we get into the viewport, it picks up the section and then each um, of these has a target here. So the target is what we're we're using here. So that's the actual element itself. And then we can get the attribute, uh, the attribute here. Okay, we could also say dot data set dot color, like so. And that still works, okay? So that's another kind of um, syntax we can use. Basically, if you're using that data attribute, um, it's all stored under that data set. So for example, if I, if I say dot, um, dot target dot data set, we log that you can see it gives us the array and we have that color uh, item in there which we're targeting here okay so that's just a really quick tutorial on how to get that effect going um, I think it's quite a nice effect that I've seen in that Mayday um, uh, website but yeah hope you um, you know take this use it how you want you know adjust with the, adjust the colors to suit your website but yeah hope you enjoy guys and as I said yeah I'll be looking to create a lot more tutorials this year and uh, release an actual course uh, that's that's my news resolution so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial thanks guys